Welcome to an enchanting journey through the timeline of artificial intelligence in ancient times. Our adventure begins in ancient Greece, a land where myth of Talos' creation was intertwined. Talos is a fascinating figure from Greek mythology, often considered one of the earliest examples of an automaton. He was a giant bronze man created by the god Hephaestus, the divine blacksmith, and was given to King Minos of Crete to protect the island from invaders. Talos's primary duty was to patrol the shores of Crete, running around the island three times a day. He would hurl massive boulders at approaching ships to keep them at bay. Despite his formidable appearance, Talos had a single vulnerability, a vein running from his neck to his ankle, sealed with a bronze nail or a thin membrane of skin. This vein contained ichor, the life fluid of the gods. The myth of Talos reaches its climax when the Argonauts, led by Jason, approach Crete. Medea, a powerful sorceress aboard the Argo, uses her magic to exploit Talos's weakness. She either bewitched him to graze his ankle on a sharp rock, or removed the bronze nail, causing the ichor to drain from his body and ultimately leading to his demise. Alongside Talos, the legend of Pygmalion unfolds. Pygmalion, a gifted sculptor, crafted a statue named Galatea so beautiful that he fell in love with it. The goddess Aphrodite, moved by his devotion, breathed life into Galatea, transforming cold marble into warm, living flesh. Traveling across the Mediterranean to ancient Egypt, we find sacred mechanical statues that were believed to possess wisdom and emotion. These statues, animated by hidden mechanisms, were thought to communicate with the gods, offering guidance and divine insight. Hermes Trismegistus, a legendary figure in both Greek and Egyptian lore, wrote of these statues, stating that they had the essence of life and consciousness. These timeless stories of creation and love echoes our modern pursuit to breathe life into machines, early concepts of robotics, striving to create entities that can think, feel, and interact with the world around them. Fast forward to the 10th century BC. Yan Shi, an ingenious artificer, presented King Mu of Zhou with a life-sized automaton around 1023 to 957 BC. This remarkable creation could move and perform various impressive functions, including singing. The automaton was designed to mimic human movements and actions. It could walk with rapid strides, move its head up and down, and even sing in perfect tune when its chin was touched. Additionally, it could posture and keep time when its hand was touched. The lifelike movements and abilities of the automaton left the king and his court in awe. However, the automaton's performance took an unexpected turn when it winked and made advances toward the ladies in attendance. This behavior angered the king, who initially thought it was a real person. To avoid punishment, Yan Shi quickly disassembled the automaton, revealing its internal structure made of leather, wood, glue, and lacquer. The king was fascinated to see that the automaton had artificial organs, muscles, bones, and joints, all meticulously crafted to resemble a human. This incredible invention showcased the advanced engineering skills of Yan Shi and highlighted the early exploration of creating lifelike machines. It remains a testament to the ingenuity and creativity of ancient inventors. During 3rd century BC, Aristotle introduced the world to the concept of formal, mechanical thought through his work, the Organon. He developed the syllogism, a method of reasoning that involves deducing conclusions from a set of premises. Imagine it as a logical puzzle where you piece together clues to unveil a hidden truth. This brilliant method of structured thinking became a cornerstone of logic and reasoning, influencing countless scholars and thinkers throughout history. He described a method known as means-ends analysis. This algorithm for planning involves breaking down a goal into smaller, manageable steps and figuring out the most efficient way to achieve each one. Think of it as a strategic roadmap to success. This method was so ahead of its time that it was revived centuries later by computer scientists and researchers working on artificial intelligence.
During the 3rd century BC, Ctesibius was an inventive mind from Alexandria in the 3rd century BC, often regarded as one of the great engineers of antiquity. His creation, the mechanical water clock, also known as a clepsydra, was a marvel of engineering and an early example of automation. Here's how it worked. The clock had a container filled with water which would slowly drip out at a consistent rate. Inside the water reservoir was a float that would rise and fall with the water level. The float was connected to a pointer or a dial that moved to indicate the passage of time. To create the alarm mechanism, Ctesibius incorporated a feedback system. When the float reached a certain level, it triggered a mechanical device to produce a sound, alerting people of the time. The feedback mechanism was crucial, as it adjusted itself based on the changing conditions. This concept of using feedback to regulate a system is foundational in engineering and automation. Cetisibius' water clock was not only a timekeeping device, but also an early example of how machines can be designed to interact dynamically with their environment, paving the way for more sophisticated inventions in the future. First century AD, hero of Alexandria, an inventive genius, created mechanical men and other automatons. He even produced what may have been the world's first practical programmable machine, an automatic theater. Imagine a small, intricate theater where mechanical figures move seamlessly, enacting scenes and stories without any human intervention. They were operated using a series of ropes, pulleys, and gears, all carefully designed to bring the characters to life, much like how modern computers use code. To 60 AD, Porphyry categorized knowledge and logic and included a drawing of what would later be called a semantic net. A semantic network may be a graph database or a concept map. Semantic networks are essential in neurolinguistics and natural language processing and LP. They help analyze large texts, identify main themes in social media posts, reveal biases in news coverage, and map entire research fields. This early attempt at organizing information was a precursor to modern knowledge representation systems. In 800 AD, alchemist Jabir Hayyan presented the theory of Taquin, which explored the possibility of creating life in the laboratory. This ambitious endeavor aimed to unlock the secrets of bringing life to inanimate objects, a theme that continues to captivate our imagination today. Today, his work can be seen in modern scientific endeavors, such as synthetic biology and artificial intelligence. These fields continue to push the boundaries of what is possible, inspired by the ancient quest to understand and replicate the essence of life. In the 9th century AD, the Musk brothers, three brilliant scholars from Iraq, made a groundbreaking contribution to the world of automation. They created a programmable music automaton, which they described in their renowned work, The Book of Ingenious Devices. This remarkable invention was a steam-driven flute, controlled by pins on a revolving cylinder. The pins were carefully arranged to produce specific melodies, making this automaton perhaps the first machine with a stored program. Around the same time, Al-Khwarizmi wrote textbooks with precise step-by-step -step methods for arithmetic and algebra, laying the groundwork for algorithms. 